This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Um, this morning, we might have had one less hour of sleep, but that is, that is more hours of sunshine, and that gets us quicker to the church this morning to be with our um, brothers and sisters in Christ who we love so much. We do have um, so, uh, several new families and new faces here this morning. Um, just wave to them, um, say hello after the meeting today, make sure that everyone feels welcome. Um, we do welcome those that are new, glad that you're here um, and to chose to worship the Lord together with us this morning. Some announcements today, just a couple of things. Those that are part of our Girl Bro Read Your Bible Bible journey that we've been doing, um, you've been reading scripture, you've been coming to the Monday Night Bible Studies, and we're going to ask if you can tell us one word that God has given to you as you've been reading. Um, we're going to create a t-shirt for our uh, Women's Gathering Conference, and we need one word from those that have been involved in the Bible, in the Bible reading. It's what special word has God inspired you while you complete your Bible reading, your name and your special word. Even if you haven't come on Mondays, but you've been doing your own Bible journey, that's great. Please write one word that God has brought to you while you've been doing your Bible study. You can, you can write this in and then put it in the offertory plate when it's time for offering, so you can do that. Well, today after church, there are several things happening. Um, first, I wanted to let us know that the Congregational and Soldiers meeting for after church today has been postponed. Um, we couldn't get the uh, number of attendants of people coming, and also there's uh, several other classes that most of our leaders are, are at today. Those things that are happening after church today are our soldiership classes, our senior, our senior soldiership classes after church. We have our teens and our core cadets have their lessons, and our elementary and junior soldier students have their lessons. We do want to give a special welcome to our elementary, uh, elementary school students that are here with us today. Um, they're going to be studying the Bible and doing some fun activities after church today, and we're so glad that they're with us. If you are attending the women's gathering, we're so glad that you've told us that you're wanting to go. Make sure that you have signed up on www.adminicamp.com. The registration deadline is March 13th. That's this week. So make sure you register at adminicamp.com. In the back, we also have our registration packets that tell us some other information that we need from you. And remember, there's a little box at the end of that registration packet, the one that's here, if you need a scholarship to be able to attend. So please, <clears throat> please read that. Well, we have our Holiness Week is quickly approaching, and we have a, lots of activities. We'll have a flyer, and we'll, and we'll post it on Facebook as well, of the activities that are coming for our Holiness Week, our Holy Week, that is from Palm Sunday all the way to Easter Sunday. We're excited to praise the Lord together for what he has done for us, how he changed the world, and how he change, e changes each and one of our lives. Those that are doing the accompanying us in the Bible study, Girl, Bro, Read Your Bible, we do have the teaching sessions and the dates that what, what we're covering in the Bible during these teaching sessions in your bulletin. Well, make, um, uh, the last announcement is that we are supporting Cadet Justin Taylor. He, they, he and, the, and Cadet Sadie Glick and Cadet Criselda de Leon, they are finishing their time in Costa Rica this, this Sunday. Um, they're finishing today. They are in their spring missions. They're going to be commissioned this June to be ordained ministers and Salvation Army officers. And so please keep all of the three, but this month, all of the three in your prayers. But this month, we are supporting Cadet Justin Taylor. We have on the back of the bulletin some goodies. Um, that he has suggested, but as always, what's most important, if you can write on a sheet of paper or on a card, um, a special prayer, a special word of encouragement, some special scripture for him. You, we can collect it in the box that's in the back of the chapel, the big, the big white box that's collecting item, items for him. 
Or you can also hand them to my husband and I, and we will mail all those things together for Cadet Justin Taylor. The last thing that I wanted to mention is that this Wednesday at 5.30, we have a housewarming party. Um, uh, we know that Galeni and Johnny have tra have, were traveling and working really hard. Um, they have their new home, new apartment, and um, we are going to have a housewarming party for them. This Wednesday is not in your bulletin. I just wanted to share uh, this Wednesday at 5.30, here in the fellowship hall right behind us there is a list of items if anyone's uh, if anyone would like to bring something in there is a list of items in the back and the sign up sheet that you can take a look at and see if you can um, help them make their house really warm and um, warm with your love so if we can make sure you take a look at that those sign up sheets and that information is in the back of our is in the back of the hall well with that we want to welcome you. We bless, we bless you, and, and may God accompany us and speak to us today. And Ms. Lola has our scripture, our, our call to worship. Before we do our call to worship, everyone be sure to invite the Holy Spirit into your heart so that we can receive God's word today and carry us through the week. Uh, we're gonna do the call to worship. In case you're new here, I'll be the leader. I'll read the leader part and you'll read the response part. I'll read it with you, okay? All right. As followers of Jesus, we are recreations. Christ is both our creator and recreator. In the first creation, he made all the wonderful stuff and all the life that throbbed throughout the vast universe. So why is the world in this mess it's in? Choices. God decided to give humans the capacity to choose who or what to worship and to love. We were lost. A new creation, a recreation was needed. This time, Christ the creator became one of us to recreate us, not from the outside, but from the inside. It's time to get rid of anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty language. Don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. Today, let us worship our creator. Amen. Amen. If you physically are able to please stand with us as we worship the Lord with music. And our second song will be Change My Heart of God is a very uh, peaceful uh, for us to contemplate. You know, so during the second song, if you know the words, close your eyes, just listen to the melody. If you don't, you know, look at the screen. But it will be one is a little more upbeat, that was arrested, and the second one will be Change My Heart of God.
Good morning. Um, today, I want to offer a special opportunity for anybody that needs prayer. For anything, they can come to the altar so we can pray with them. So, um, also, um, it's Lent season, so we're doing prayers. Every time you come to the church, you can come to the front um, and pray. So we've been prepared for Easter. Um, Psalm 133, verse 1 said, How good and pleasant it is when God people live together in unity. Um, I felt like in the moment that we prepare for Lent seasons, I want us as a church to be united, and I want today for us to pray for unity in the church so we can stay together and be a great family. Let us pray together. Lord, we come before you as a church family, united in faith and love for one another. We humbly pray for your blessing, for healing, for unity, and direction as we spread your word of your mercy and love to the rest of the world. May we always seek to follow your holy ways and make our heart be open to your will. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning. Most of us are hoping that we have blessings. Is that not right? Amen. Most of us are hoping that we um, have freedom, freedom in Christ, freedom that our wonderful soldiers and active military have given us throughout the years. We want that freedom. However, God gives us freedom, and he gives us blessings. And how does he do that? He does it through the generosity that we have, that we give back to him. Through that generosity, he's able to bless us, and he's able to give us freedom. And that freedom may look different than just freedom that we get from our military. That freedom means that we're free from all of those evil desires that maybe money gives. Maybe money in our hearts is really something that we desire. We desire more. We desire the thing that our neighbor has. We covet it. But that's not really what God wants us to do. God wants us to be broken of that need, desire for more. He wants to give us that freedom. And through our own generosity, giving back to him, we're able to get that freedom. And through that freedom, we're able to gain the blessings that he has for us. So as we prepare our hearts for that time of giving, let us go to him in prayer. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we just th so thank you, Lord. We thank you for the giving that you have given to us through your death on the cross that we will celebrate in a couple of weeks, Father Jesus. And we're so thankful that you gave us an opportunity to have that eternal life. And through that eternal life, we have blessings and we have freedom. And I just thank you, Lord, that you're able to continue those blessings and that freedom because we bow to you and we give to you. We give our tithes and offerings. We give our time to serve other people, Father God. And we just thank you that you put that on our heart to do. And we know, Father, that many times we struggle even to put that little bit into that plate each and every week. But through that, we show you our desire to give to you and to serve you. And we know through that that you bless us. And we thank you for that, Lord Jesus. And we just come to you with heavy hearts sometimes. And we know that you meet those needs as we give to you. So we just thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything that you're doing. And we just thank you for you. In your precious heavenly name, amen.
Wow, I'm so blessed. I see all of our young people putting in something into the plate. Even though maybe it was handed to them by an adult around them, but at least they're understanding the generosity of the hearts of people. And I just feel so blessed. As you know, I have a heart for young people, and it just warms my heart to see them putting stuff into the plate as well. Can we please stand as we get ready to um, give our doxology? And we're going to have an introduction first, and then we'll start. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father. This morning I have a new duty, so as you don't see me uh, doing the usual greeting that I do every every Sunday when the when I had to do the offering. Thank you for Sister Sherry Cohen that uh, really did a good job this morning. God is good. I'm going to be reading the scripture this morning, and I'm going to be using uh, it's going to be reading from the New International Version, Second Corinthians chapter five. Because when you read the letters of Paul, Paul was a very deep, uh, his writing, sometimes you have to be careful to understand them. It's not that they're not complicated, but they're not so easy uh, or simple than when you read the Psalms or the Gospel. Pa Pablo's getting to be this, this soldier that if you're not careful, you don't seem to understand the meaning. He seemed to be jumped back and forth and put you to, he just picked your brains so you could get rid of the spirit or learning the scripture. So it's going to be Second Corinthians, uh, chapter 5, I'm going to start from verse 14, New Ver International Version, and this is the word of God. For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all die. And he died for all, that those who live shall no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and will raise again. From now, from now on, we regard no one from worldly point of view. We regard no one from worldly point of view. So we want to regard the Christ in this way. We do so no longer. Therefore, verse 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creature has come. The old one has gone. The new one is here. You become a new person. All this from God, who reconciled us to himself to Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation that was God was reconciling the world to himself. Christ, not counting people's sins against them, and he has committed us the message of reconciliation. So if anybody be in Christ, he is a new creature. God bless you for it. Good morning. through generation I 
know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses, the one who opened up the ocean. I need you now to do the same thing for me.
come and fill you again. Come and fill me again. Yes, Lord. This is our prayer for this morning because you said, ask you for anything. We ask you this morning to fill us again. Fill us, Father God. It's going to be our prayer for today. Fill us. Fill us. You are the only reason that we are here this morning. for to all that participated in the sermon to on the message today on the program today. Am I on? There you go. Now I'm on. So we're going to continue our series on the awakening. Well, the Lord he wants to awake us for a certain area every week. So today we're going to talk about this idea of rebirth. Okay? So today later today throughout the sermon you, you will have a, a, a opportunity to participate on the sermon, okay? So I want to give this to you right now, so then you will start thinking. Later today, and I will give you a heads up, you have an opportunity to say something that has been reborn in your life, something that you used to do, you no longer do, something that you used to say, you no longer say, Something that you used to use, you no longer use, you get the idea. You will have an opportunity to share what is the old that has been, that's gone, and what's the new that has come. Get it? So start thinking. Okay? Don't disconnect from my sermon, just start thinking. Okay? First, let's first establish this idea. What does it mean to recreate, to be rebirthed on the spiritual sense? And I think the best way for us to look is to look of God and humankind. Genesis 5, verses 1 and 2. This is what the word of the Lord say. This is the written account of Adam's family line. When God created mankind, he made them in the likeness of God. He created them male and female and blessed them. And he named them mankind and they were created. So from this verse, we see that God is the creator. We are the creation. We also see in this verse that we are created after God's image. All right? And this is confused. If you just stop right there, it will be confusing because if we are created after God's image, why do we need to be recreated? Why do we need to be rebirthed? If we stop this message here, then basically we're saying God did not do the best that he could do. Because now we have to be recreated. However, I believe that you and I, we know the answer. We, can be, we need to be rebirthed. We need to be recreated because we were born pure. We were born perfect. But humanity fell into sin. We were made perfect on his image. But then humankind 
fell into the trap of sin. And because of sin, we see in the book of Romans that we all fall short of the glory of God. We all fall short to what God created us to be. There is a problem. And we all fall short of living our full potential. We fall short because now our thoughts, our hearts are corrupted. We fall short because we're no longer the person that God created us to be. The result is if we remain in this state, it's like having a beautiful vase with a dead plant inside. I'm not much of a gardener. The last plant that I had was a basil plant. And I remember that I put it on the kitchen window so I can get some light. Anything that I touch basically dies. I don't know what to do, right? But then Claudia's grandma that's in heaven with Jesus right now, she would get plants that were half dead, and she would just revise that and revive, rebirth that plant. I remember that the joke around every time that we went to visit uh, Claudia's parents was that we had a map to be able to go through the jungle to be able to find the door because there were plants everywhere. And she had that kind of hands that a plant may be dead for somebody, but she was able to bring new life into that plant. But my basil plant was inside of a, actually a really nice black vase. I eat the little tag with the instructions of what to do with the basil was there. And I follow instructions and I try to put the right amount of water, the right amount of sun, and it still It was a nice vase with a dead plant inside. Well, no, it wasn't even good for salad. And then when we don't go to the Lord and we ask and we seek that rebirth, that new life, we can be looking good on the outside, but on the inside. In other words, we all need a Savior. Miss Maggie sang for us, Oh Lord, oh Lord, I need you. And I don't know if after a, a, a certain time, she actually changed the lyrics and said, Oh Lord, oh Lord, we need you. Because of sin, creation is made imperfect. And now, we need to be brought again, rebirthed, recreated. We need a Savior that can bring us life. And see, and Paul shared this scripture today, 2 Corinthians 5. This is the scripture that Carlos read for us. Verse, verses 14 and 15 say, For Christ's loves compel us. We are convinced that no, the one that died for all, and therefore all die, and if he died for all, that those who live shall no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and that was raised again. It can be a confusing but basically, what Paul is trying to say is, all who are dead because of sin need Jesus, who rose again, defeating death, and giving us new life. Giving us an opportunity to be reborn if we believe in him. Death, sin, dead plants. This is a depressing sermon so far. But just like a good movie, when we're all down, when there is the moment of panic, there is a hero that comes and serves that person in danger. Dada, right? So the main hero comes to the story, and we see that main hero in the person of Jesus to offer us escape for that condition. But not just escape, but give us a chance to have a better life to recreation. How many of you have ever been to an escape room? You know what I'm talking about. 
They lock yourself inside of the room, and you have to find clues on what to do next to be able to leave the escape room. And then they give you, I don't know, an hour, two hours. Each place has a different time. And when you were there, you could tell, okay, I am okay, but there is an issue. I can't leave this room. And when we're trapped into sin, sometimes we look at the escape room, we look at our life like the escape room. Okay, it seems like I'm okay, but I am trapped. And you follow the steps if you want to be free again. God is giving us those steps right here. 2 Corinthians, if we continue reading verses 17 to 19, therefore, therefore means but, However, whatever is in here, there is something else in here. Therefore, this is a very important word. Therefore, if you're here, sin, brokenness, lost, trapped. Therefore, there's another option. If anyone is in Christ, Notice that Paul is not saying, if you or you or you or you, anyone, means there is no precondition. You don't have to fix your life before you come to Christ. You can come to Christ the way that you are right now. You don't have to wear the suit and tie or the fancy dress to come to church. You don't have to know how to use the most eloquent words to pray. You don't need to know that the, the theology of the certain verse, how this was presented to the original reader. In other words, sometimes we don't check all those boxes. However, therefore, anyone, and that's you, that's me, who's in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. Notice that the scripture does not say the old is here and the new is here. Because they will occupy the same space in your life. So in order to make room for the new, the old needs to be gone. We cannot have both at the same time. I lived like that. I think I shared you my testimony. Even when I was going to the church, I was like, okay, I'm in church. New. Church was over during the week. Old. Sunday, 10 a.m. New. The major said amen. Old. You see, because those two, they occupy in the same space. So that was friction. That was a battle inside of me. I was the beautiful babe, but dead inside. But what scripture and what Paul is saying, the old needs to be gone. So the new will come. All of this is from God. Why is Paul saying this? Because you and I, we have to realize that we can't do those things on our own. We can try. We can pretend. But all of this comes from God. The one that gives us the power, the ones that gives us the energy, the ones that convince us that this old needs to go. Before I read scripture, I didn't know I was a sinner. Because I lived according to the world. And if everybody else was doing, I can do it too. But as I start diving and reading and learning, and learning from my brothers and sisters in church, that's when I realized that I was here, but I needed to be here. I need to let go of the old, so the new must come. All of this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Anyone in Christ. See, there's even a track. 
Bhagavan Krishna is like music today. That's awesome. Keep playing, keep playing. <laughs> you are right. You are right. Technology, you were fine. You were just fine. Nobody saw with you. <laughs> you were fine. <laughs> to be in Christ means to believe that Jesus died for our sins. And he rose again. He gave us life, hope, and the future. And if that's the case, we are made new. Remember that I told you that you're going to have an opportunity to participate today. So I hope you were able to come up with some areas in your life that you can say, okay, I, I, I heard your sermon, Captain, and I can think about all my own life. Here's where the old is gone. Here's what the new is right now. So I want to give an opportunity. Okay, I'm going to read this verse, 17, 19 again. And then you start thinking, okay? And then if you feel compelled, if you feel that you want to encourage our church today and you want to share what is the old that's gone, how is the new in your life, once I finish reading verses 15 to 17, I want a few of you, not all at the same time, don't be fighting, don't be pulling each other's hair, pushing each other. Everybody's going to have an opportunity, okay? Because I know that we all have a lot to share here. So, and... Orderly fashion, stand, say a few words. What is the old? What's the new? Sit down. The next person will do it. Okay? You got it? You have something to share? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. All of this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. Here's the first. Anybody else? Mr. Vernon. Amen. He just finished. Anybody else? We got a mic now. So if Ms. Maggie has a mic. See, now everybody's scared, Ms. Maggie. <laughs> Anybody else? There you go. Yeah, they don't want the mic.
The old has gone. Be careful, be careful. Amen to that. Two more, two more. We keep and get two more. The old is gone, the new has come. Anybody else? One at a time. <laughs> it's going to get awkward after a little bit. <laughs> we got time. There you go. There you go. Understand, understand. I know you're looking at me, Miss Christina. <laughs> you're probably all probably thinking, how long is this gonna keep there? <laughs> I'll be the last one then. You know, for me, it was the same thing as you. It was the words that I chose. Um, and Mr. Venom as well as the, the alcohol. Uh, and um, for those that maybe Evelyn will know a little bit, or maybe I think she came late um, to the core of what I used to be a member. Um, it's basically a hooligan, which means people that go to soccer games, uh, and we used to go just to fight with the opponent fans. Um, so then I will fight in the stadium and then I will get to the church right as the major will start to preach. And our, I think I shared with you before, our chapel has two floors. So I always go to the back of the second floor so nobody will see me coming up. But you have to picture this because I will come to church with the whole gear of my soccer club, sometimes with green hair. Uh, <laughs> you know, because I was a fanatic. I was a hooligan, you know, and I'm, I'm thankful that God took away the desire. The old is gone. The new came eventually, right? So anyone in Christ, and to be in Christ is to believe that God has died for our sin. He rose again. He gave us life, hope, and a future. But when we are recreated, there is an internal recreation, and then there is an external recreation, rebirth, you can say. The internally is when we make our right relationship with God, and we have access to him in prayer. This comes through our faith in Christ. But also there is an external consequence to that recreation, because I am a firm believer, and if you have a different opinion, I would love to hear your opinion, okay? But... When we are rebirth, when we gain access to Christ, when we were born again, we don't do this just for ourselves. We do it because we can impact the lives of people around us. Because you see, it's like, oh, I accept the Christ. Great for me. Yeah, it is good for you. But with that comes also the external rebirth. To be able to share with others in your own way. I'm not saying that all of you are called to be preachers or teachers. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying, on your own way, be able to share what the Lord is doing in your life. It could be as simple as, I used to drink, I no longer drink. I used to curse, I no longer curse. It could be that simple. 
It could be as simple as, I'm struggling right now. But God has me here. And we're so glad that you're here. That I can tell you. You're not here by accident. You understand that, right? We could have hired any person, right? But you came. Ephesians 2.10 For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, with God preparing advance for us. To do the good works. What good is a church or a Christian that's like, you know, I'm just going to worry about myself. All of you struggling? Too bad. Loser. But we are created to do good works for each other, for our church, for our community, the places that we work, the places that we shop. Now, recreation in every aspect of our life is not always instantaneous. It's not always in the blink of an eye. In fact, I'll dare to say for most people, it takes months, years sometimes. From the beginning of you saying, okay, Lord, I accept you in my life. Until you actually start seeing the fruit. For most people, it takes time. For most people, there is that battle of here and there, outside the church, inside the church. But eventually, due to the power of the Holy Spirit, and the more that we get to know him, we're able to overcome that old self. So I have a challenge for us as we close our time this morning. Two questions. Have you allowed Jesus to recreate you internally? How do we do that, Captain? First, I think we realize that we need him. That's the first thing, right? If we don't realize that we even need him, then we're not going to see. When we are hungry, what's our realization? We need food, right? When we're sick, we realize that we need a doctor, we need a medicine, we need prayer. Sometimes all in, all together, right? So first of all, we have to realize that we need a Savior. You know, are we ready to have faith in Him, to believe that He created us, that He loves us, that He died for us, and He rose for us, that He forgives us, and He wants the best for us? Today's the day that we can be recreated, right? Have you have been recreated in your relationship with Jesus externally? Do we have a desire to serve him? Or are you just holding on to yourself, your own life? You are all self-centered about all the things that you need, and now we're disregarding everything. So this morning, as Sydney, is Sydney in the piano? Can you play a music there, Evelyn? I want to give us a time to think about those questions, right? We share some things in here. We share some of the struggles that we have. We share some of the things that the Lord has done for us. And now I want to pose that question for you and for me. Are we ready to be rebirthed? Are we ready to let go of the old and say, well, but Captain, but I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to, to, to let go of the old. I've been struggling with this my whole life. You still have a choice to try again. And one of the things that always gets me is people say, this is just the way that I am. I don't know how many times I have said that in my life. This is just how I am. This is who you get. Right? And sometimes we do that because we're afraid of the unknown. We're afraid of what's different. We're afraid of finding out that maybe we can be better. We can be more loving. We can be more caring. So this morning I want to invite all of us to say, okay, what are some of the areas in my life that maybe internally, meaning, got to bring to the Lord and say, hey, Lord, this is something that I'm struggling with need your help. 
Or maybe externally, you know, I have concentrated too long in my own life. Maybe I just need to stop concentrating so much on myself and ask God, hey, give me a desire of how can I serve. Give me a desire who can I help or pray for. Bring a person to my mind that maybe I haven't reached out in a, such a long time and I can just maybe call, send a text. Forgive, for goodness sake. When we forgive, we're not forgiving because of that person. We're actually, actually forgiving because it does good for us. When we hold on to what people have done for us, you know who's getting hurt? You and me. Not the other person. The other person is just living life normally. Maybe your way to serve today is to say, okay, Lord, this is the an external of me. just need to let go. Stop worrying about myself. How do I worry about the person next to me? How can I show love to the person next to me? Internally, externally. If there are areas on your life that you need to bring it to the Lord, do that this morning. On your seat, or you can come and pray at the altar. Let's leave that old one right here. We dig a hole. Just leave it there. And we leave it with the new this morning. Take a moment to visit with the Lord as the piano plays. Father, we thank you for uh, this morning. We thank you for your word. Thank you because that opportunity of uh, being rebirthed is available for us. Father, we're thankful for those that at their seats make that prayer today and say, Lord, I'm, I'm ready. Come and change, change our hearts. Come and change my heart. Father, be with us today. We love you. We're thankful for each person here in this chapel, for their families, uh, and for those that are watching at home. In your name that we pray. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. For our closing song, we're going to be singing song 204. 204, the words will be in the screen. There are three verses to the song. We're going to be singing verse 1, chorus. We're going to read verse 2, and then we're going to sing verse 3 and chorus. So one chorus, we're going to read verse 2, and then three chorus. Okay? Why don't you stand? We've been sitting down for a while.
And after the introduction from the band, please, Ben Master. Thank the Lord this morning. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit to the work on earth is done. Let's read verse 2. Name above all names. Precious Lamb of God, Messiah. All are sinners lamb. The band master wasn't paying attention. Huh? Verse 3. When I stand in glory, I will see his face. And there I will serve forever in that holy place. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your son. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto ye. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give you peace. May you go in grace today. <laughs> 